Welcome back to the Post Workshop. It has been a couple of weeks since I published a video because my wife and I just returned from a trip to Alaska. I used the trip as an opportunity to shoot some beautiful landscapes and fascinating wildlife with my new Canon EOS R, a great mirrorless camera by the way. Since the EOS R can shoot video in C-Log at a high bitrate using intraframe compression, I think the footage would be great to work with in a future color grading tutorial, which I know many of you are interested in. That plus other Avid tutorials are in progress. While I was away, many of you asked some great questions about Avid's redesigned 2019 interface. So this is what I'm calling a mailbag video. While I do my best to respond directly to all serious questions on YouTube and social media, some questions require a more detailed visual explanation. So I have collected your questions, organized them into several categories, merged a few together, and created this video as a concise series of responses. Join me as we open the Post Workshop's first ever mailbag. Okay, here we are in Avid Media Composer 2019.7. The first problem that I would like to address is a bug that some of you may have experienced since upgrading to Media Composer 2019. Fortunately, there is an easy workaround until Avid corrects this problem. At certain screen resolutions and hardware configurations, sometimes the menu items become inaccessible. As you can see, I am clicking, but nothing is displaying below. Not only that, but the source and record monitors will sometimes blank out when playing a clip. The audio is still heard, but no video is seen. Now before you throw in the towel and write off Avid as junk software, I can assure you that it is not, this bug is also not a common occurrence. It's what software developers call an edge case. As far as I know, this only happens on Windows-based PCs, not Macs, that are running screen resolutions above 1920 by 1080 and have the Windows taskbar hidden. Once the taskbar is set to no longer auto hide, Avid works beautifully. The frustrating part about this bug and possibly why Avid did not catch it before now is it only seems to be triggered after very specific operations. For example, I am able to reliably trigger this issue when I pull up the source browser as a floating window and then double click a piece of media to preview it in the source monitor. Up until that point, Avid had been working fine. But when I perform that same operation without the Windows taskbar hidden, there is no sign of the bug. Strange, I know. But I have been in contact with Avid's support team and they are aware of the issue and are currently working to correct it. But for any of you who might be experiencing this, just disable auto hide for the Windows taskbar until this bug is fixed. As you might remember from our previous tutorial, any tab can be removed from its panel and used as an independent floating window. Redocked next to any other panel, or by using the Alt key on Windows or Option on a Mac, tabbed alongside other tools in Windows. But what if you would like to move two or more tabs at the same time? Easy. Just click and drag this striped gray rectangle, and when you release the mouse, all tabs within that panel will be moved. This can be very helpful when rearranging your workspace quickly. Speaking of workspaces, some editors have been complaining that the new workspace bar takes up too much screen real estate. And I agree, it is large, but we need to remember that Avid's intent is to make the application more inviting to new users. So on balance, I do think this helps ease Media Composer's learning curve. But for those of us who would like to reclaim this space, simply right-click anywhere in the workspace bar, and you have three choices. Icon and text is enabled by default, again to help guide editors new to Avid. Icon only will slim down the bar. This is nice until you have created more than one custom workspace, because as of 2019.7, all custom workspaces are given the same icon. 
If anyone from Avid is watching, in a future update, numerous viewers of this channel, myself included, would like to see a selection of various icon designs to choose from. Then custom workspaces could be differentiated from one another without the need for text, making this icon-only view more useful. But we also have the option to hide the workspace bar entirely. When you do so, a new icon appears in the upper right corner of the interface. Clicking the small triangle next to the icon opens a drop-down menu that allows you to quickly flip between workspaces, save your current layout as the active workspace, restore your current workspace to the default. This can be a good option when you are experimenting with different layouts that aren't quite working and you just need a quick reset. Create new workspaces, delete custom workspaces, and of course, Restore the workspace bar if you would like. When I record tutorials, I try to keep the default workspaces intact, including the workspace bar, so the interface is more familiar for viewers learning Avid for the first time. But when I am editing for myself or a client, I typically hide the workspace bar to maximize screen real estate and generally keep things as clean as possible. Once you start assigning workspaces to custom keyboard layouts, you will find that you won't need the workspace bar or even the drop-down menu all that often. But like I said before, I do think the workspace bar is a helpful addition for editors new to Avid. If you don't like or need it, Avid has made it very easy, pardon my editing pun, very easy to extract the workspace bar from the interface. As you might remember from a previous tutorial, bin containers are windows that allow you to sort through, organize, and work with any number of bins at the same time. They are extremely flexible in how they can be used. But is it possible to have more than one bin container open at a time? Absolutely. And here is how. Go to File, New Bin Container. This will create a new bin container as a floating window. Using the sidebar, you can access any bins you need, and their contents will display in a pane to the right. If you would like, you can dock this new bin container just like any other window. It can be positioned so both bin containers are visible at the same time, or tabbed alongside other bin containers using Alt on Windows or Option on a Mac. As you may have noticed, this could lead to confusion with generic and undescriptive names like bins and bins.1. To keep yourself organized, I recommend renaming each bin container by clicking the sidebar's fast menu and selecting set bin container name. I think this would be more intuitive if the interface allowed renaming by right-clicking on the tab itself, but as of 2019.7, renaming must be done by way of the bins sidebar menu. There you go. It is possible to open as many bin containers as you need. I feel like we covered a lot of ground in this video, everything from bug workarounds to interface preferences, feature requests, and even going further with concepts introduced in previous tutorials. If anything wasn't clear, or if you have more questions about Media Composer 2019, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. If the channel continues to build up enough interesting questions from our viewers, I would love to make more of these mailbag style videos. Maybe they can even become a recurring format that we revisit on a regular basis. So again, please keep the questions coming. I am also working on several more Avid tutorials that I think you will find pretty interesting. To ensure you don't miss those, please subscribe to the Post Workshop and press the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the very best with all of your post-production projects.